Okay, so I have three algebra problems here, one, two, and three, just three random problems. And I'm uh, making this video about the time um, where most students uh, are gonna be finishing up their algebra course or their math course. So we're probably talking around about uh, final exam time for most of you out there. So if you've been taking algebra, uh, you're going to likely be facing a final exam of some, of some sort. And these are some things that you must know to pass algebra. These are some basic skills uh, to kind of just quickly review. Again, these are just random uh, problems. I could have done a ton of uh, uh, different type of problems. You'll need to know other stuff, but you should be able to do uh, these three problems, okay, if you're fully prepared uh, for your final, if you've actually, you know, learned something in your algebra course. Now, if you can't do these problems, just use this as feedback, but uh, these are definitely uh, problems that you... Uh, the type of problems that you would certainly not be surprised to see on a final exam. So let me go ahead and give you the first one here. What I'd like you to do for this guy is to uh, graph this line. Okay, so I want you to graph this line and then tell me the slope. Just sketch it. It doesn't have to be the perfect graph, but go ahead and uh, sketch this line and then also tell me the slope of this line. Okay, and then for this one, I want you to simplify this, fully simplify this if you know how to do that. And then I want you to simplify this expression right here. And we're dealing with powers and exponents. And what that generally means is that your final answer has no negative exponents. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about here. You're going to simplify this so your final answer has no negative exponents. So if you want to uh, pause the video, work on this, and then maybe put, uh, uh, you can't put your graph, obviously, in the comment section, but, you know, put, put in whatever, you actually just put in, hey, you know, I, I, I think I got these all right, or I don't know what I'm doing, I need help with this, whatever. Any feedback is good feedback, but I'm going to get into how to do uh, each of these problems here in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I am the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and uh, I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything in between. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of your math course, I could help you excel in your respective math courses. Now, if you're taking any exam that has math on it, for example, the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, AccuPlace, or Alex exam, CLEP exam, teacher certification exam, you get the idea. I could help you prepare and pass those exams if you homeschool. I have a very comprehensive homeschool math curriculum. And if you don't have any math notes because your dog ate your math notes or whatever the case is, maybe you haven't been taking math notes. Well, listen, I'm here to tell you I've been teaching math for decades. Those students who take great math notes almost always end up doing awesome in math. So start taking awesome math notes. You'll thank me later. But you can use my math notes in the meantime. I'm going to leave links to my notes in the description of this video. All right, so uh, if you want a uh, another minute or two to do these, won't take you too long, okay? I would imagine most students that uh, know what they're doing could knock uh, out these problems in about uh, three minutes, under five minutes for sure. So if you want to go into pause the video and work on it, that's fine, but I'm going to get into the solution right now. We'll start out with the first problem, and here it is. So uh, we have 2x plus 3y is equal to 12. So the problem is I want you to graph it and then tell me the slope. Now, there's a couple different ways you can approach this problem, but I'm going to show you the way that I think is the easiest. And um, what I want to do, this particular uh, linear equation, okay, is written in standard form. Now, I could uh, go ahead and directly graph the line in standard form, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn this into a slope-intercept form. In other words, I'm going to turn this into y equals mx plus b form, because when I do that, this little m right there, is my slope. So I'm going to kind of be killing two birds with one stone. I'll be able to easily graph the line when it's in slope intercept form and tell you the slope. Where here, I could go ahead and graph the line, uh, but uh, I won't be able to, I'll have to do some additional uh, work uh, to uh, find the slope. But let's go ahead and turn this into slope intercept form. How do I do that? Well, I need to solve for y. Okay, I need to solve for y. So first thing is I got to move 2x to the other side. So it gives me with negative 2x plus 12. If you don't know what you're doing here, okay, or if you don't know what I'm doing, if you're confused about this, well, use this as feedback. I have a ton of videos on my pre-algebra and algebra playlist on my YouTube channel, or rather uh, you could just 
uh, get into one of my uh, courses, I'll teach this stuff beyond uh, thoroughly. Okay, I really, really get into this with a lot of different examples. All right, so once I move that 2x over, I need to go ahead and now uh, divide everything by 3. And uh, you can see here I'm left with negative 2 thirds x plus 12 divided by 3 is 4. Okay, so here is this equation. Here, this equation is in standard form. This equation now is in slope-intercept form, or y equals mx plus b form, where this m, that coefficient in front of the x, is the slope. So what's the slope? Well, that's negative 2 thirds. It's super easy. So if you got that right, that's excellent. Okay, so that is the slope of this line. Now let's go ahead and actually graph the line. Okay, so how do I graph a line? That's in slope-intercept form. Well, this is something you absolutely need to know. You want to start with this number first. This is the y-intercept. Okay, it's the location where the line is going to cross uh, through the y-axis. So let's just make a little quick sketch. So here's one, two, three, four. There you go. There is four. That's one point that's on the line. Okay. Now we're going to use the slope, all right, to get to uh, our second point. The slope, you think of it as kind of driving directions from this point to get to the a second point that's on a line. All I need is two points that are on a line. So here you can see the slope is negative two-thirds. So what this is telling me is to go down two, all right, because that's negative, over uh, three to the right. Now, if you don't understand that, this is not the video for me to cover and teach you everything about the slope. Again, I have tons of uh, other videos on the slope and whatnot. This is just kind of a, this video is really designed to just kind of check your understanding and give you some feedback. But we go down two over to the right three, and this is our second point. Of course, I can get the coordinate for that point, but I just want to go ahead and get a quick sketch. So now I have two points. I draw my little line through here, and there you go. There is the, the graph of, the, of our line right here. 2x plus 3y is equal to 12. Okay, so we got that right. Excellent, All right? That's very, very good. That shows me that you understand, you know, how to graph linear equations and um, how to uh, go from standard form to slope-intercept form and know a little bit about the slope. So very, very good. Okay, there's a lot of graphing in algebra. So that's, uh, you know, um, uh, you definitely are going to be doing a lot of graphing lines, slope, and everything else in multiple different chapters in algebra. Okay, so let's move on to our next problem. So uh, that was to simplify the square root of 80. All right, now this is a problem. You can kind of think of this as like if I gave you um, 20 over 40, all right, what I, and I said, hey, is this, can you simplify this? And most of you be like, oh, yeah, that's the fraction one-half, right, two over four or one-half. You wouldn't leave your answer 20 over 40. You would simplify it or reduce it to one-half. Same idea when it comes to uh, radicals and square roots. So when you have the square root of 80, we want to simplify it. Now, can we simplify it? Yes, you can. So let's talk about some ways we can factor 80, all right? So 80 is the same thing as 4 times 20, okay? like, okay, that's fine, 4 times 20. You can see here, uh, 20, in fact, is 4 times 5. So 80 really is 4 times 4 times 5. Now, why am I writing it this way? Because when you're simplifying radicals, you're looking for factors that are perfect, are perfect squares, okay? Perfect squares. And what do I mean by that? Numbers like this, 4, 9, 16, 25, etc. Because when I take the square root, of these type of numbers, you get a nice, beautiful little uh, number, right? Two, of course, positive and negative two. Here's three, here is four, this is five. You get the idea, okay? So you, you we wanna look for perfect square factors amongst these numbers, right? Now, sometimes a number uh, underneath a square root has one, sometimes you won't, but you need to uh, search for them, okay? So here, 80, I can write as, uh, I got two perfect square factors, all right? I have four, I have another four, and five, all right? So now what I can do is I can, these are the factors of 80s, and they got one big square root. I can actually pull apart that one big square root and write it like this, the square root of four times the square root of four times the square root of five. That's equivalent to this. That's a property of radicals. Again, I, I can't teach you all of this in this one video. I have a lot of different uh, videos on this. Uh, of course, uh, I teach this again in my algebra course. 
All right. Uh, but if you understand this so far, you're like, okay, no, I get what you're saying. So here, I can now take the square root of 4 and take the square root of 4. Square root of 4 is 2. Of course, it's positive, negative 2, but let's just go with 2 right now. Square root of 4 is 2, and then I have the square root of 5 right there. So 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times the square root of 5, that is the answer. If you give me that answer, I would give you full credit. Of course, if you wanted to be a little bit more technical about it, you could put in that positive negative um, in front of the 4. Okay, So this is uh, the square root of 80. Okay, would be these answers right here. So if you got that right, if you got these first two right, very, very good. Okay, you're doing good. Let's move on to our last problem. By the way, if you didn't get these right, use this as feedback. All right, now here is a problem that is testing your um, knowledge of um, the properties of uh, powers and exponents. So this pr uh, particular problem can be uh, solved in a couple different ways. I'm going to show you the way I did it. All right. So as long as you ended up with this as your final answer, that's what counts. Again, when we simplify this, you want to um, leave your answer without any negative exponents. So the first thing you need to do here, I have a 2. You need to distribute that outside power to this inside power. So that's going to give us a, that's going to be 5 times 2 is 10. So that's going to be 8 to the 10th. And then this negative 3 times 2 is going to be negative 6. So when I distribute this outside power to these inside exponents, I get this right here, a to the 10th, b to the negative 6, a to the negative 4th, and b to the 5th. All right, so at this stage of the problem, okay, um, there's a, a number of different things you can do. I could subtract these, these a's are the same base, so I can use the property of exponents of uh, subtracting exponents, because I could think of this as division, or I could uh, use the uh, um, negative exponents in general. Now, if you want to know more about negative exponents, I have, again, a ton of videos on this stuff. You need to be subscribing to my channel or look at all of my content. I've, I've it's really be taken, it's taken me years to put the amount of content uh, on my channel. So you could learn a lot from me or just in a more formal, uh, in-depth way in my courses. But what I want to do is I want to get these A's and B's together, but I want to uh, move uh, these powers such that the um, the power itself, the x one, becomes positive. So if I could move this upstairs, this a to the negative fourth, that a to the negative fourth will become positive. So I'm going to move that up so it's next to the a to the tenth. In okay, case so that's what I did there, all right. So I move this upstairs next to the a to the tenth, and it becomes positive. And now I want to move this down, this b to the negative six, next to this b to the fifth. Uh, because that negative 6 will become positive. So that's b to the uh, positive 6 now times b to the uh, positive 5. And now these have the same base. I simply add the exponents, a to the 14th, and then here, same base, add the exponents. That's going to be b to the 11th. So a to the 14th, if I misspoke, I kind of, you know, I make so many videos. Sometimes I miss, miss, I miss, I may misspeak like I just did right there, but uh, please forgive me. You can see what I'm trying to say here. a to the 14th over b to the 11th. This is your final answer. Now, if you got all three of these right, that's a good indication that you are tracking towards an A+. Plus, okay, uh, If you didn't get all these uh, uh, right in A+, plus in algebra, obviously, and hopefully your other courses as well, but if you didn't get these right, use this as feedback. Right? If, you're, if you um, have time to study, uh, even if it's one day, you can do a lot even in one day for your final exam. A lot of students are like, oh, you know, there's no hope. Listen, in one day, how many hours of study can you squeeze in? Maybe you can, you know, go to study four to six hours, right? Just, you know, get yourself in a focused state. You can, you could go from a F to a C with this amount. I'm not saying cramming is the way to go, but, you know, it's never too late to uh, try to uh, get ready for a test. Okay. And, you know, so if you have one week, that's a good amount of time, but you need to, you know, get yourself and complete uh, immersion, right? And don't just give up, all right? To be like, well, I'm not ready, whatever. I'm going to have to take this uh, in summer school or I'll just retake the test again or it doesn't make a difference. I'll just accept a C when maybe you could have gotten a B. That is never the right approach, okay? You always want to try to, um, you know, leave your, uh, you know, you know, leave your class, finish your class with the best grade possible, especially if you're in high school or college because your grades count. There's this thing called 
uh, the GPA in high school, your GPA is used to, uh, to get into college. And when you're in college, your GPA is often looked at uh, for future employers. So this is serious business. Okay. All right. So hopefully this video helps you out in some uh, small way. Again, three random problems that you definitely need to know to pass algebra. But if you like this video in some small way, please consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, basic to advanced mathematics. My goal is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. So please take advantage of the content that I've made and I will be creating. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.